want you to come with me to the 23rd Psalm. We were in the 46th Psalm at the 9 o'clock service, and the Spirit has led me over to the 23rd Psalm, verse 4. And I pray that what God has placed on my heart will be a blessing to you. The 23rd Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, 23rd Psalm, verse 4. The 23rd Psalm, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4 reads like this yea though i walk through the valley thank you you may be seated yea though i walk through the valley thank you you may be seated yea though i walk through the valley i want to talk today from this thought very simply keep pushing keep pushing i want you to find that that that, that holy ghost part in your soul and look at your neighbor and smile at them now if you don't like them that's your fault because you sat down beside them or either they flop down beside you but smile at that neighbor and say neighbor i want you to know even when there's a lot going on you got to keep pushing now this time touch yourself and say self we can get through this keep pushing yeah, keep pushing, keep pushing. I, I, I want to commence this sermon simply by telling you that when one analyzes all the anxieties that come in life, when one peruses through all the perplexities that come in life, when one surveys all of the struggles that arise in life, it is safe to conclude that sometimes giving up looks like the best option on the table. It's amazing that when you look around at life, all the weight, all the responsibilities, all of the things that come up, all the sicknesses, all the deaths, all the news reports, all the negativity, all the pessimism that surrounds us. Sometimes when you look at the options of your response to all you've seen and all you've gone through, sometimes giving up seems like one of the best options. Often I wrestle with how our ancestors, slaves, African, the enslaved Africans kept waking up in the morning every day to deal with injustice and racism and beatings and whippings and being separated from their children after they had just given birth to their children. It looks like suicide would have been better than slavery and yet many of them kept waking up in the morning, kept going out in the cotton field singing up a above my head I hear music in the air there must be a God somewhere it's amazing to me how people push through stuff that could actually kill them it's amazing to me that how many of you showed up this morning because your arrival to church your showing up to church was an act of faith and endurance in itself now some of you ain't, that haven't been through anything and life for you is a scoop of homemade vanilla ice cream with Twizzlers and sprinkles and Babe Ruth's and Milky Ways on the side. If life for you is a dazzling dance through the daisies and a rapid run through the roses and a tiptoe through the tulips, I ain't preaching to you today. I want to talk to the folk in the room who know what it feels like to get tired. I mean when the alarm clock goes off you start hitting the snooze button three and four times because you know the minute you wake up and put your feet down on the carpet in your bedroom. You got to handle your family. You got to handle your job. You got to handle some bills. You got to handle some mess on this side. Some drama on this side. Got to go work with co-workers that know how to tap dance on your last nerve. It's a whole lot going on. How do you keep pushing when every time you look at the news and you see that thing that calls himself the president of the United States of America saying something else silly calling people dumb says Maxine Waters has a low IQ it's talking about immigrants as if they're things and not people and his own wife is an immigrant always saying some always tweeting some it could absolutely depress you watching the news nowadays and maybe that's not your testimony but it just worries me to turn on CNN and to keep hearing the same story I have to just cut it off because it's hard to keep pushing
solution when you become inundated with the negative and inundated with foolishness and inundated with always something happening if it ain't one, one thing it's another have you ever had a week where it just wasn't one issue it was another issue on top of the issue if it wasn't your house it was your job if it wasn't your job it was your children if it wasn't your children it was your boo if it wasn't your boo it was something in the church if it wasn't something in the church it was something in your bank account if it wasn't in your bank account it was in your body where are the real saints who can say preacher you already on my street pulling in my driveway because the truth is sometimes it's just a lot going on and how do you keep waking up to deal with it all how do you find the energy how do you find the sacred swag how do you find the momentum how do you find the tenacity how do you find the force and the choice to keep on going after life knocks you down there were people you thought would always have your back and you discover some of your real friends actually were fake and real enemies what happens when everywhere you look is something going on who in the church can say preacher I know that's right because you can be saved and still struggle you can be a believer and still be burdened you can be full of faith and still be frustrated you can be a worshiper and still get weary you can be a praiser and still be under pressure but if you made it in this sanctuary today I don't care what you walk through and I out of last week if you made it in this sanctuary this morning you in the right place and you got the right preacher because God let me fly over Florence just to get here to tell you no matter what it is you got to keep pushing and let me tell you what really confuses the devil when you come to church after all he tried to throw on you and you got the nerve to come lifting your hands talking about praises what I do even when I'm going through I just need about 50 of y'all the rest of y'all can stay asleep let's just confuse the enemy right now and let God know that we are appreciative after everything that could have taken us out here we are on the third Sunday of the ninth month of 2018 saying Lord through it all this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The devil should have took you out while he had a chance but since you made it here I got a feeling everything is about to be alright for you. Go to wake up that person beside you and say keep pushing I know it's a lot on you but you can make it. I know you got a lot happening but you can take it. Greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world if God be for you who can be against you even the youth shall faint and get weary young men and women shall utterly fall preach sharp I feel like it but they that wait on the Lord he'll start renewing your strength somebody holler keep pushing and that's why I like the writing off of our text today because he's credentialed and qualified to tell us to keep on pushing. This is my homeboy David. You know David, the youngest son of Jesse. David, the little brother to Eliab, Shema, and Abinadab. You know David who was out there tending to the few sheep in his daddy's backyard and the prophet Samuel went down to have an ordination service and his father overlooked him. But I'm here to tell you that God will take you from being overlooked to overbooked. Yeah, 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 yeah. No oil flowed on now one of his brother's head. That's my grandma's word. Not now one of their heads. And Sam said, I can't leave until this oil flows on somebody. Jesse said, well, I got a young boy in the back. He's a little shepherd boy. He's rooted. He stinks. And in walked David with a, with a beat up, nasty, torn, white t-shirt on and some busted Nikes. I know he had on Nikes. He walked in the room and the oil flowed on his head. And from from that day on the oil of God rested on him the next chapter there was a nine foot giant from Gath called Goliath and who took care of it David did with his oil itself and the women started singing Saul has killed his thousands but David he's a bad mamma jamma he's killed tens of thousands and from that day on Saul got jealous because God's hand was on his life you ain't hear me Saul got jealous because God's hand was on his life you ain't hear me I said Saul got Got jealous.
jealous because God's hand was on his life because God's hand was on his life because God's hand was on his life some folk don't like you and what they really don't like ain't you it's the fact that God's hand is on you and they can't pry his hand off of you David had to run and duck the jealousy and the javelins of King Saul. He's living in caves. He's trying to survive and maneuver his way in the wilderness. And I just can see him ducking and dodging the spears of King Saul and King Saul's men. And he found a quiet place. I imagine in my sanctified Baptist imagination, it had to be near a brook, a slow streaming flowing luminous brook and he sat down with his quail pen and his parchment and he said you know I used to be a shepherd but the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want in the middle of a wilderness he said you make me lie down in green pastures you lead me by still waters you restore my soul and you lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Some of y'all are too arrogant for me. You think you made it because of who you know. You think you made it because you aka Delta, Omega, Alpha, Zeta, Sigma, sit your silly self down. God took care of you for his name's sake. He made sure that door opened because his name is on you and he didn't want to look bad. Somebody ought to thank God for the next 10 seconds that he kept you for his name's sake. Yea, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil. David said, you just missed your shout because you got to shout over what I didn't say and what I could have said. I could have said, yea, though I sit in the valley. Yea, though I turn up in the valley. Yea, though I find me some Hennessy or Cabassier or some tequila. It, don't ask me how I know nothing about that. Yea, though I'm in the valley, I could, I could go to the gas station and buy a cigarillo and pull all of that out and put something else in and lick it back together. It could have said, yea, though I get high in the valley, but it doesn't say I get high. It doesn't say I have a pity party. It doesn't say I get drunk, intoxicated, and inebriated. It said, yea, though I walk. Sometimes you got to just thank God that you're still walking through stuff that could have killed other people. Some of you only shout because you got a car, you got a house, you got a promotion. Can I tell you why I feel like shouting today? It's that after everything I'm going through, I'm still walking. I, I still have my equilibrium. I still have my energy. I can still put one foot in front of the other, and I'm glad I'm still walking. I may be limping, but I'm walking. may have a cane, but I'm walking. I may have to cry, but I'm walking. David said, I'm glad I walked through the valley of the shadow of death because God always shows you something in low places. Oh, he said, I saw something I'd never seen before Lady Rose. I saw something in the valley. I said, David, what did you see? He said, I saw something. And you always going to see something in your low seasons that you would never see on the mountaintop. Yet life and trials have a way of clearing up your vision. You can see stuff in the storm that you wouldn't see in the sunshine. He said, I saw something because there's always some sermons in your sleeplessness and some lessons in your loneliness and some diamonds in your disaster and some jewels in your junk and some treasure in your trash and some gospel in your garbage and some sapphires in your struggle I saw something I said what did you see he said I saw the shadow of death and he said I realized at that moment I was tripping because what I was so scared over was just a shadow does a shadow of a gun shoot does a shadow of a knife stab? Does a shadow of a person gossip? He said, I was about to start losing sleep over a shadow. And I don't know who that word is for today. It ain't as bad as you think it is. 
I know you looked at your bank account and it looked a little rough, but I'm here to declare under the Holy Ghost, it's just a shadow. I know you think everybody talking about you when you walk in the room because they were laughing. You ain't that important. It's just a shadow. Calm yourself down. Fluff your pillow. It's just a shadow. And the only way you get a shadow is light has to be shining from somewhere. So you got an option. Either you're going to focus on the shadow or you're going to look for the light that's creating the shadow. Either you're going to see the glass is half empty or the glass is half full. What you going to look at? Yeah, you know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. David said, I'm so glad I kept pushing in the valley. <laughs> he said, I'm so glad I kept moving in the valley. I'm glad I ain't lose my swag in the valley. Because God always has some blessings for you on the other side of through. God always has something waiting on you on the other side of the valley if you decide to keep pushing. Do y'all want to know or no? what God has on the other side of your valley. Don't fool me now. We all hungry. Do you want to know or no? Yeah. Number one, David said, I'm glad I kept pushing. Number one, because God will go before you. If you slip down out of verse four and slip into verse five, this is what it's going to say. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, you don't understand what I just said. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, you do know this is an analogy between shepherd and sheep. And although the sheep are crazy, the craziness of the sheep doesn't change the goodness of the shepherd. And so the good shepherd always makes sure that whatever pasture the sheep are about to come and graze on, he makes sure he pretexts it. Because there's some foliage out there that smells good, but if the sheep ingest it, it'll make them sick. It's some stuff that looks good out there. It's some stuff that smells good out there, but if they start chewing it, it will literally create an infection or a virus inside their body. So the good shepherd goes out to the table land, which is a flat area in the mountainous terrain for the sheep to go eat on the table land, and he makes sure the table land is clear of all foliage and vegetation that can be harmful to the sheep. It gets even gooder. The shepherd makes sure that if there happen to be any cougars in the mountain or any wolves in the mountain or any jaguars or bears in the mountain, he's looking around for the enemies of the sheep. But his presence alone is enough that when the sheep show up, even if they're in the mountain, the sheep can still eat in the presence of their enemies. Who in this room can thank your God that before you showed up, God had been ahead of you, making sure there was nothing that would harm you. And every hater that was trying to find your soft spot, God said, I wish you would. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Am I the only somebody that's been eating at a table that God has already prepared in the presence of your enemies? Now, if you ain't ate nothing, don't say nothing. But if God has been opening doors, if God gave you a job you didn't go to school for, if God helped you qualify for stuff that your bank account didn't support, you ought to be quiet. But if he's been good and if he's been going before you, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He's been going before you. Just look at your neighbor and say Matter of fact, when you go eat after church, you ought to walk in the restaurant just like this. When you go to work tomorrow, you ought to walk to your desk just like this. When you go to school, walk in the classroom and look at the teacher and just say, tonight when your boots start getting on your nerves, watching your show, just look at them and say, 
somebody going to say, what's wrong with you? Say nothing. I'm just glad I got a God who will go before me. He leads me. He guides me. He fixes it for me. Is there anybody here can give God praise? Because he will go before you. And he just won't go before you when you keep pushing. He'll put something on you. Because the Bible says he anoints my head with oil. Now, 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 this bless me because sheep have moist nostrils, which attracts insects and flies and pests. And they go up in the nostril of the sheep and they start having a party. They start doing the biker shuffle and the cubic shuffle because it's so moist and wet. And they just up there having a party. And the party gets so good that they lay eggs and larvae in the nostril of the sheep and so now the sheep have this terrible infection inside their head because there's something going on in the head that they can't fix their hooves and their arms don't reach their nose to scratch so you will see a sheep with a whole lot going on in his head hitting his head against rocks dragging their nose through the grass because they have something that's irritating them that they can't scratch. It's something going on, y'all sleep, in my head. It's so much moving in my head. It's so much stuff that's in my head that if I could get it out, I could sleep better. If I could get it out, I would be nicer to people. If I could get it out, I could forgive people. It's so much. flying around in my head and all oh, that good shepherd knows when next season is coming so every morning he grabs a canteen of oil and pours the oil on the head of the sheep because the shepherd knows that the oil keeps the gnats away and the reason why some of y'all are as peaceful as you are right now with all going on around your head is because early this morning God anointed you and you're too anointed to be annoyed. It ain't that you that deep. You're very, very human. It ain't that you forgot how to cuss. You just don't cuss as much as you used to because you got some oil on you that lets you not worry about stuff that you used to be concerned. You know you got oil on you when you can be nice to people that's been nasty to you. You know you got some oil on you when you know they've been talking about you but you walk up to them and say, hey baby, how you doing? How your mama them? How your grandma doing? I wish I had a church of oily people. If you set some by somebody ashy and dry, I feel bad for you. I like to sit around somebody that got some oil on them. There's an old preacher that said it's amazing grease. He couldn't say it's amazing grace. He said it's amazing grease. And I think it's bad vocabulary, but it's good theology. Because when God puts his oil on you, you can slip through stuff that everybody else got stuck in. Where are the oily folks? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to preach to the oily folks who can say, I'm so glad God put his oil on me. I don't act like I used to act. I don't think what I used to think. I don't say what I used to say because the oil of the Lord I'm glad his oil is on you and that's why you better be careful who you sit by at church yeah you better make sure you sit by somebody with some oil because the next portion of verse 5 says my cup runneth over That's what's right. I'm so sorry. You sat on the wrong road. Try again next week. I want to sit by somebody. When I come to church and I'm feeling a little weighted down, they got so much oil on them that when the service gets shaken up, some of their oil stars. Look at somebody and say, you made the best decision. Go look at them and say, you made a good decision. Sitting by me because my cup runneth over. My peace is running over. My joy is running over. My Jesus is running over. The Holy Ghost is. (laughs) 
Some people got a gift, but other folk got oil. I don't want nobody preaching and singing to me that ain't got no oil because I need the oil to make it through this world. I need the oil to handle my family, my cup. Everything in your house is about to get better. Everything in your family is about to be get better. People can't even come in your presence this week without feeling the Holy Ghost on you. Because when you keep pushing, he'll go before you. He'll put something on you. But last and finally, he won't just go what? Before you. Y'all help me preach, act like you got it. He won't do what? Go what? Before you. Then he'll do what? Put something. He'll do what? Go. Then he'll do what? Put something. But last and finally, he'll put something behind you. Now, the other week, Dr. Watson, I was reading Ephesians 6 about the whole arm of God. Helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, shield of faith, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth so you won't sag, shoes, shod with the preparation of the gospel. I'm sure they were Nikes. And uh, I was reading, I said, God, you know, I'm cool with all everything you gave us, but I just found one issue. You, you left our backs uncovered. Because the majority of our issues are not what people do in your face. It's, it's what they try to do behind your back because some of them know although we got the Holy Ghost we still got some hood right there beside it so they don't try you in your face I just lost about half the room but the other half said I know that's right they don't try you in your face they, they connive behind your back they lie behind your back they drag your name through the mud behind your back. So God, why would you leave our backs uncovered and vulnerable when that's the most vulnerable place on our whole body? God said, now you done got too big for your britches. You've been to a couple of schools and now you think you learned something. He said, son, you over in the New Testament talking about Ephesians 6. I already handled your back in the Old Testament in Psalm 23 verse 6. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. He said, you ain't got to worry about your back. I already took care of that because surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life as a matter of fact when you get in your car to go home you ought to clean off the car seat in the back because goodness needs somewhere to sit down and mercy needs somewhere to sit down as a matter of fact when you go to work tomorrow you ought to clean off some chairs and put two seats by your desk and if anybody try to sit down say uh uh you can't sit right here that's goodness's seat and that's mercy's seat when you go get your hair did next week uh, tell the beautician I need you to give uh, some weave to mercy and go give goodness a good line up uh, cause everywhere I go goodness and mercy uh, are following me uh, all the days of my life uh, can y'all do me a favor as I head to my seat uh, reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand uh, and hold their hand uh, now if they look half sleep uh, go find somebody else if they look half uninterested go find somebody else but grab that neighbor by the hand and say neighbor you gotta keep on pushing cause God will go before you 
God will put some on you and God's got your back if you lose your job he's got your back if they lie on you he's got your back if you have to go to the hospital he's got your back if you have to go to the funeral he's got your back if somebody walks out he's got your back if somebody walks in he's got your back when the enemy is conniving and your haters are working and hell is manipulating and the storm is raging and the lightning is flashing and the thunder is rolling and the wind is gusting he oh he he's got your back is there anybody here that can throw your hands up and say lord i thank you for having my back other people have left other people have lied other people have manipulated but i'm glad you got my back how do you know that he got your back because one friday they took your savior and his son up a hill called calvary he died until death died they took him off the cross put him in a borrowed tomb and he stayed there all night friday stay there all day saturday and something happened around Saturday evening heaven got a call from Jesus in the grave Jesus called heaven and said may I get a wake up call the angel at the front desk said I have some times available what do you want do you want 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. do you want 5 a.m. or 5 30 a.m. do you want 6 a.m. Uh, 6 30 a.m. I got 7 15 and I have 7 45. What do you want? Jesus responded, I don't care what time you put down, just make sure that is early Sunday morning and early. Sunday morning your Savior got up with all power in his hands and because he lives I can face my tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know who holds the future life is worth the living just because he lives shake one more hand and shake it like you got oil shake one more hand shake it like you got the holy ghost say neighbor keep pushing and be not dismayed whatever be tied you god will take care of you god will take care of you i said god will take care of you won't he do it have they done it have you tried him i'm trying to sit down but my soul done got a little happy because the more i call him the better i feel jesus my savior jesus lily of the valley jesus bright and morning star jesus bridge over troubled water jesus 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 can't nobody do me like jesus can y'all help me one last time reach over across the aisle and touch somebody that you haven't touched and tell them neighbor is heavy right now but i got a feeling everything is gonna be all right tell them you shout because i'm pushing and i'm a shout because you pushing and by the time we get through shouting there'll be a shift in the sanctuary one two three give them some glory give them some glory i said give them some glory Like 
you know the storm is passing over. Put your hands together. Hey, when I think about Jesus, how he brought me out, I got so much to shout about. I can Go ahead and bless him. Somebody lift your hands, say he brought me through. 